Boom, boom, boom. This is Jared and I'm back. All right, guys, it is time to make sure we're all hyped. All right, I've got a great interview today. I do, and I'm so glad you're tuning in. So again, this is the Warriors Quest Show, and I'm your host, Jared A. Brown. Uh, please share this message. Don't be stingy. All right, we've got a great, great interview tonight. All right, I've got a kidney warrior who's coming all the He's coming from Rochester, New York. All right, New York. All right, where it's at. That's where it's at. And we've got this guy coming on only 27 years old. He's looking for a kidney donor. And we've got the great opportunity to help him get his story told. All right, so please share this message. And let's get everybody watching this. Start a watch party. All right. Get everybody involved so we can get this rocking. All right. All right. I'm going to bring on. All right. The person we're spotlighting is Neil. And I'm going to bring him on now. Here we go. I'm going to give him a very special intro for our very special guest. Please give him a very good welcome when he comes in. Boom. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for uh, having me. Holding out on those graphics, I see. I didn't get to see all of them yesterday. That's awesome. (laughs) Thanks, man. All right, man. I'm so happy that we got you on board. Uh, Thanks for coming on the Warriors Quest show. Uh, Let's get your story told, bro. Um, All the way from Rochester, New York. Uh, Man, relatively young, all right? So we've had some other kidney warriors on the Warriors Quest show that have been young as well. But you're you're not even 30 30 years old and you you're fighting for your life so to speak you've got the boxing gloves of fighting for your life trying to find a kidney donor so man um let's hear a little bit about how your story started um you know tell us a little bit about how you found out you had kidney disease and how this all came you know to kind of uh how it came to play so uh a little uh sneak peek is i'm a type 1 diabetic and um, you could say neglect was a part of um, my relationship with diabetes growing up. But, uh, you know, just go down the line and uh, I was, it was three years ago. It'll be three years in March, actually, when uh, I was, I came home from work and I just took my, my work shoes off and my feet were so swollen and I knew it was just an uncomfortable feeling that something was going on. So I, uh, I called my doctor because the, you know, the next day I tried to get my shoes on and I couldn't. So he sent me for blood work and immediately that day, um, it's a, you know, it's one of those traumatizing things that just stick with you, you know? So I was, it was right around my mom's birthday mm-hmm. and my brother and I were, um, going to take her out to dinner that night. And, I, so I had the day off naturally already, um, and I had just uh, talked to my mom. I said, that, yeah, the doctor wants me to go give blood work, and I remember not even a half an hour after going to the lab and giving the blood work, my doctor was on the phone with me wanting me to be, uh, as he put it, pack a bag. You're going to go to the hospital for a couple days, you know, and I had no idea he didn't give me any inclination on the phone as to what was wrong with me, you know? So when we get there, they go through the rundown. Have you, have you had an infection recently? You know, have you been hit in your kidneys? Is there anything that you can think of that, you know, would set your, your, it it was my KT over V number. Uh, Okay. It set it off so high. And, you know, to my recollection, I didn't, there wasn't anything. I was, 24 years old. I was working full time. I owned a house and I was, you know, I was just tired. I was, that was the biggest thing is I was tired. I I didn't have a definition of how badly I felt until 
they placed the catheter in my chest the next day and they sent me to blood or for dialysis for the first time, you know, and the biggest question to me was like, is this the next step? Like, aren't we jumping ahead a little bit? There's not like a, you know, for everything else in my life, there was a pill or there was a, (laughs) you know, at worst an injection right that could take care of everything and with that um my nephrologist at the time was he you know he worked for the hospital that i'm registered at at strong and um he said no you know you came in at the right time and uh it would have been dangerous with my potassium levels keep rising if I waited any longer and it was, you know, right at the end of the snow season here in Rochester. And they asked me, you know, how are you clearing your driveway? And I was shoveling and they said, you're lucky you haven't had either a stroke or gone into cardiac arrest with your heart. Yeah. Yeah. So my heart, my heart function was down to 28, 28%. Um, within, I think the first two or three, weeks of dialysis they actually ended up getting 38 pounds off of me so um needless to say i was pretty inflated with fluids and with water so i had a lot of water retention i had um my dog visiting me right now unexpectedly sorry about that (laughs) all right that's it's all good um but i just you know that was it it hit me blindsided me and i didn't know what options were you know when you're 24 you hear about dialysis it doesn't even touch your universe that that could happen to you uh, the next thing i know is they're telling me that i have to go for right three times three times a week for four hours and i'm like <laughs> what are you talking about i got a life to live you know let alone uh-huh. let alone every other thing that i've had to deal with at that point you know I, the last thing i could think about was dialysis so um, it got on my radar quick. So I, uh, was out of work for quite some time. Cause I was a cook at the time. And, um, so I had the fistula placed on, I remember I got diagnosed on, uh, March 26th. And then I was, um, allowed to leave the hospital. Uh, I think it was April 4th. And then on April 16th, I had my AV fistula placed and I've been using that ever since um, probably at the end of July, I started that year. And then I, uh, I went home and did home dialysis with the, uh, the stomach catheter Mm -hmm. and that I, you know, I didn't realize how much I benefited from the relationships of being in center, Okay, you know, and, you know, and anybody who tells you, or anybody who goes to dialysis in center will say that the majority of the time they try to sleep, you know, but even those interactions in the waiting room or sitting next to somebody in a chair, you sit next to them for 12 hours a week. You're going to, you know, you're going to learn a little bit about them, whether sure. their dem- demographics or age are the same as you or not. And if you, you know, it's, a humbling, yeah, it's inevitable and it's a humbling experience because it just shows you that this could happen to anybody at mm-hmm. the blink of an eye with expecting it or not expecting it. Um, but that and that's what see, I got these, I got the shirts made too. Um, I love it, yeah, that's and, cool. Um, it's kind of been like a, like a motto that I, that you know, everybody who is part of my support system goes by is that uh-huh. like. A warrior, you never take a day off and you never know what comes next. And like we talked about before, there's ups and downs. And when there's ups, they're incredibly high Mm -hmm. and you feel like, you know, this isn't a part of your world at all. And when you're down, you're in the valley and you need that support system to come help you out. So I just recently had these made and then they got like my uh, information on the back and then for the hospital as well. So all right. um, my family's going to be rocking them. Unfortunately, this year we don't have the ability to do a walk or anything. But you know, right. if, yeah. And and then you know, I put this on the front too because I feel like the best thing is that you know there's thousands of people that are going through this, and mm-hmm. I'm young enough, and I you know besides for this, I'm considering myself pretty healthy, mm-hmm. you know, and 
the if I can be a positive role model or, you know, an advocate for it, you know, take you, for instance, someone who has been affected by it, but not directly, you know, I give all my admiration to you. And that's like the type of people like you are the type of people that we need in the world. So absolutely. Yeah. So we're thankful for that. So, Hey, my Thank pleasure. You. You're welcome, man. We need, we are right though. We need so many, more people that will bring awareness more people that talk about this the right. better you know right. because, uh, there's if we get the word out and we talk more about this then we're going to get more excitement we're going to get more enthusiasm uh and, and more importantly we just get more education and you know and steve steve belcher and i talk about this all the time is like education is key because you know, I've got a feeling that if you had a little bit more education you now, granted, you, you know, you, you could have done things differently in hindsight being, you know, type one. But, OK, if your doctor had maybe been a little bit more direct or given you more education about what the ramifications or consequences really could be, you know, right. and I get it. You were you were very young when you're a kid or when you when you ever when, it, when you found out when you had diabetes. Okay, I get it. You were really young. Okay, but nonetheless, okay, as you're still seeing a doctor periodically with being type one diabetic, your doctor could have had a a, a chance. You know, there could have been opportunity. A bug in the ear, little little right. something right. saying, yeah. And that was the thing is that I it 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 was it wasn't even on my radar. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Like something wrong with my kidney. What are you talking about? Like, you know, the things you hear is that you'll hear a back pain, you know, and I don't know, sometimes like that, even if you damage your kidneys, you know, a, a common thing you hear about is urine in your in right. or yeah. blood in your urine rather. Oh, right. Yeah. Protein so, in the urine. Yeah. Yeah. So I hadn't experienced any of those things, you know, yeah. and when filled up or when the fluid buildup happens, it doesn't, it's not like you just gain it like that, you know, it, it's over time, it's just compiles on and, so, you know, when it was in my legs, I was like, oh, maybe I got to stretch my legs. I had no inclination that, okay, that's a sign that my kidneys aren't filtering right, right. and aren't working, you know? Exactly, so, exactly. The fatigue, the swelling, you know, those things, you know, you, you know, a little education would have given you at least a, a glimpse of what may be happening, you know? And so anyway, look, let's, let me put you solo and I'm going to put you solo so we can see the shirt and you mind um, like showing the shirt, um, and maybe if you have, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's the front, and then the back is just kind. Of, so the front is kind of just generic for everyone, uh -huh. you know, because right. I'm not the only one going through right. this. And if you can't yeah. donate for my life, there's another person out there that you can help, you know, whether it's sure. in New York or if it's in Utah or wherever, you know. And that's the that's kind of the key to this is that it's more than just me. But then the back is just is for my personal information. Right so, on. I love it. I love it. That is so awesome. And Very then, cool. um, and like, uh, like we had talked about, you know, I'm not the only one going through this. There's thousands of people. So if, if my shirt catches somebody's eye when I'm walking through the park, you know, and they take the number down or something like that, or even if it, if it makes someone go home and, uh, sign their driver's license, you know, even, that is a huge step in the right direction. And, and for that, you know, I just, I feel like the more people know the better because, you know, you not to be morbid, but you, your kidneys can't do too much for you when you pass away, you know, but they could save somebody else's lives, you know, along with other donate or other organ donations. So um, besides for just the awareness of it, we wanted to, we, I know you and I talked about how we could uh, bring just more awareness to organ donation in general, you know, because mm -hmm. science needs people and people need people. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the, one of the most incredible selfless acts a person could have, you know, so it's just, it's something that I didn't affect or I didn't expect affecting me at 24, but, you know, it. God hands the toughest challenges to people he know and he knows can handle it. And I know that 
I'm not doing it alone, but everybody supporting me has been just awesome throughout this whole thing. I can't even just begin to say how much people have helped right. me. So it's, you know, I feel like it's part of my duty to help the next person and try to do what I can. I know I can't give a kidney, but I can advocate for someone and I can, you know, spread knowledge and, you know, hopefully get more the conversation started because it's once the conversation yeah. gets started, that's half the battle, you know? It so. really is. It is, you know, because you start talking about it and then it opens up some sort of uh, viewpoint. And if someone sees it in a different way, then all of a sudden they may not, you know, cause uh, I, I got, you know, I got a different perspective because I really didn't know a whole lot about kidney disease until my sister-in-law got kid well she was diagnosed and i found out she had kidney disease and so sometimes what happens is the people that aren't directly affected okay and don't have a loved one or they don't have it themselves and uh, they don't necessarily have a great perspective or they don't have that great clarity and so right. if if we can get that discussion going like you're talking about then hopefully we can get more people to have more clarity, to understand and have empathy, uh, to understand that you have the boxing gloves on every day and you're battling, right? right? You know, right. And, and they they don't understand because they just sometimes think, oh, they're going to dialysis, they're fine. Well, you know, going to dialysis has some good things, like you talked about. You can bond with somebody, and you can get to know them, and you've got camaraderie, and you know, uh, and so there's some good things, and you may have some really good techs and nurses and staff and i hope so but what happens though is that okay what if you what if your dialysis didn't go well um you know and, and no disrespect to your staff but sometimes that doesn't that does happen and and then right. you come back and you feel wiped out and you don't feel refreshed um what if you know what if you get home and you feel wiped out and then all of a sudden you know, you've, uh, maybe you've, you've got insomnia. I mean, it's just so many different things that other people that aren't connected to this disease just don't have a clue about. And that's what we have an opportunity to let people know more about this. Uh, and so I agree with Steve and with James Fabin, who have said that, you know, education is key. And I, I totally agree with that. Thanks for watching, James Fabin. And, and we've got some great people watching tonight. Bridget. Um, Rena Hill Darby. We've got uh, probably some of, again, some of your, your family, Joanne Eldridge. I think you said that was your grandma. Is that right? Yeah, that's great. All right. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, Maria Barbarito Ferguson's watching. Thanks for watching. Um, we've got uh, Diana Schroff Lewis. Thanks for watching. Kathleen Mary. Um, that's mom. Very nice. Thanks for watching, mom. Uh, Jonathan Trailer, you know, I've got love for you, brother. Thanks for watching. Uh, he's the, the guy that I was talking about that was on our show just about a month ago, and he's a kidney transplant recipient now. He's a great, great guy. Um, man, hopefully you guys can connect. He's got a, a bunch of positivity, always booms with, with so much energy. Um, he's a good guy to connect with. All right, and Melissa Kim trailer. That's uh, Jonathan's wife. What's up, Melissa? Oh. <laughs> yeah, and we've got uh, James from D Dad Vice TV saying, Hi there, Neil's grandma. <laughs> All right. So, and Scott Eldridge, thanks for watching. What if you want to go on vacation? That is a good question. So, um, so that, you know, I, I'm going to let you answer that. I know what other kidney warriors have done, but um, what have you done to make uh, like reservations or arrangements uh, for cities or where you may want to go to so that you can still do dialysis when you go on vacation? So that was a, you know, a big, big question at first because being 24 you know I, I don't know if Rochester is where I want to stay and you know my dad and stepmom own a house in Florida and uh, my stepbrother got married in Mexico my cousin got married out in Seattle and they were all questions you know and so I did a test run and I went to Virginia Beach for a week and um I'm with Fresenius is my dialysis company and they are, they're pretty big. I don't know if they're out near you guys as well. Yeah, but, they are. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so that just tells you how big they are. Um, sure. So we found one in Virginia beach that was 
roughly 20, 25 minutes away. So, and um, I, in Rochester, I have a chair time of 5 a.m. So okay, I tried to, try to mm -hmm, yep. Cause on one day a week, I have to go to, uh, I have to go to work after. So, you know, and that's a brutal day, but uh, nonetheless, you know, try to keep the schedule the same. So my, um, my social worker here got in touch with the clinic down in um, Virginia Beach, and they set me up for 6.30. So, you know, I have four-hour chair time. So I was like, okay, I'll three, three out of the seven days that I'm gone, I will roughly get back around 11, 11.30, somewhere in there, depending on the traffic. And, mm -hmm. um, and like you said, some days you have good days, some days you have bad days, and it seemed like it was just coincidental when I was going on vacation. I don't know if it was the drive or if it was the stay or what have you. I just had compiled bad days. So the uh, traveling and vacation route for dialysis is tough mm -hmm. um, for my experience, at least. And granted, it was only the one time now. Um, I've kind of just decided to schedule the short couple trips I can around. Like, you know, I'll get out of my chair on Saturday around 10 o'clock, come home, and then I don't have to be back until Tuesday at 5. So I try to do something in those three days, if at all possible. Um, but, you know, that Saturday is usually a wash because I'm in the, the phase right now where I need to sleep after a treatment, you know, whether they take, they take a liter off or they try to, you know, test it and take close to three liters off. I still need rest. And, um, but the thing is, is sometimes, um, I I'm hungry after sometimes I don't have an appetite for 24 hours, you know, it all depends on a day. So it's kind of like a crapshoot when, it, <laughs> when you leave dialysis to see right. how you're going to feel. And the only time will tell, but, um, and that's the other thing is if I was to go on vacation, I feel like the days that I do have treatment is a waste of a day, you know, so it kind of stinks. Um, and I know my dad's asking that question cause he wants me to get down to Florida, but, um, <laughs> uh, and I have not tried home hemo. I, I think I'm too afraid to put my own needles in. I can watch it. Uh -huh. All day long on anybody else, right. but I have, yeah. I have I have yet to see my own needles go in. Um, okay, you haven't watched. Okay. No, nope, I'm. Uh, I'll turn my head and or you know, and I still use the the cream for every treatment, but mm -hmm. I bite bite my lip too. And okay, <laughs> I can't eat. I to this point, you know, I yeah. have a pretty pretty developed fistula. You could see All that. Right. See but, that yeah. um. So there's some good scar tissue in there. I can't feel it with the numbing yeah. cream, but you know, it's, right. it's that anticipation that you, you know, you get ready and so, for. And yeah. I'll talk to people in my family about it and they'll tell me that they have trouble getting an IV. And it was like, yeah, well, and I remember my first one, you know, so, and, and, you know, that's the one thing I could, I could say that uh, I have over them is that I've seen some, some things you know at at 27 now and not that i wish this upon anybody but right, you know right. it's, it's the uh it's the god's honest truth as to it's the harsh reality of it you know it, it is and i'd like uh, other kidney warriors that are watching tonight to please comment and let you know uh, give your support uh, the more comments the better so that way this gets viewed more facebook sees the comments and, and makes this more visible to people so please continue to comment and the other thing it does with the comments everybody is that it it, uh, it helps neil understand that he has a huge kidney disease community behind him um you know good days bad days like we talked about neil it's great to understand that you have other people that have done what you've done or going through what you're going through and when you have like-minded people that can share that you feel like there's hope because they're going through it or they've gone through it and you don't feel alone right. and, and you know and it's so it's so powerful when you don't feel alone you know yeah, it, it feels like it's not an inconquerable yeah. task right right 
Right. Mm-hmm. So I please. think that's how how you and I actually got in touch because I I was talking with Steve and then he uh, told me he was like, yeah, actually tonight I have an interview and I watched your interview with him and uh-huh. you know that at that point I said, you know, there's people out there who I need to talk to because I felt you know like I said I see other people at dialysis, but then I go to I work at a grocery store and I pass thousands of people a day and you can't. You know, you can't tell a person has kidney failure unless they're willing to talk about it. And it's not something they don't hand out pins, you know, like that. So it really is about networking. And for a while, I don't know if I was in denial or if I just didn't reach out or what. But then I talked to uh, the American Kidney Foundation. They got me in touch with Steve. And then he said, here's the guy to talk to. And that was you. So. Yeah. Since since then, I've uh, definitely been more willing to talk about it and more apt to say, you know, it's me. This is the life I have, and you know, and it it does. It takes a small village to raise a person, and even when they're, you know, the problems keep building up, my small village is turning into a big community, and you know, it's and that's the thing is I it's it creates relationships too that you know you exactly. never would have you never right. would have expected to have if this didn't come about you know right. so it does uh, and I've always been taught you gotta look at the positive things in life so you know this is a you know in one way or not it's a blessing that I was given these challenges to meet these people along the way they affected my life you know and my that my biggest thing is that I affect their life, you know, hopefully in a positive manner. In a positive way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, and, right. and, and that's a, you, you know, and I agree with you is that when you have, um, when you get connected to someone else, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and they have some sort of connection to the kidney disease, whether they have it or they have a, a you know, a loved one that has it and you start to, you know, have a connection, then there is a, you know, there's, there's, there's so much that we can learn from. Okay. And everybody has a story. Okay. We're telling yours tonight and yours is powerful. I mean, uh, type one diabetic, 24 years, 24 years old. All right. And, and, and now, you know, a little bit later after you found out, okay, you're still working, which I commend you because that's not easy to do. (laughs) Other kidney warriors know that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, I, that, and that honestly, I'm a people person. I love to talk and my job is a lot of customer service talking to people. So I was out of work for seven months and I felt like the biggest mental health burden on me was that I, I didn't, you know, I was isolated in my house. I love my dog. But <laughs> I have yet to teach her how to have a conversation with uh-huh. me. So Okay. At that point, you know, the mental health aspect was just right. as important as the it physical is. health. Yeah. Absolutely. Mental health is huge. Yeah. Uh, it really is. Uh, we've we've had uh, just a number of discussions um, on different shows from the Urban Health Outreach Media about how kidney warriors not only struggle physically, okay, you know, insomnia, cramps, um, if fatigued, you know, and all sorts of different things, but they also struggle with mental health uh, because right. it, it changes your life. Okay, you you're not able to do some of the things you used to do, and then you have the realization that, well, especially after you have when you have that catheter put in you, that's a, a rude awakening for you, isn't it? Oh you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. And, yeah. You know, the, you, the biggest thing was. They put the catheter in, and then I think after is when they said, and you can't get this wet, you can't shower, um, it's going to be sponge baths for a while, and yeah. and we're going to try to schedule for a fistula, so then you'll be able to have a shower. And I said, what is a fistula? What is you a know? fistula, right. Yeah, yeah, at that point in time, and pretty yeah. much I had a great team at Strong that, you know, they were very thorough with the explanations, probably because – me at the time I was a, a deer in a headlights like uh-huh. what is you know so yeah. um I learned a lot and I'm very thankful for them but yeah when they told me that I was going to have a mainline catheter put in my chest and you can I still have three little dots up here mm-hmm. um 
but you know, they're my battle scars. I wouldn't have it any other way. And, right. You know, so um, I think it was startling the catheter going in more startling for the catheter coming out though. Okay. Um, um, kind of just, kind of just uh, takes your breath away. We'll say, mm -hmm. but um, one, two, three pull type of deal. But uh -huh. even that, even that, you know, now it, now I just know, don't trust the, the number three. Cause it's not, it's not always. <laughs> happening right. then. It's not always accurate. Okay. All right. right. So, right. you know, uh, we've, uh, coming from Rochester, New York, we have um, somebody who's, uh, you know, I've, I've met him on Facebook. I've had him as a co-host, and we've interviewed him on the Urban Health Outreach Media, um, faith, you know, on, on a number of different shows, actually. But he, he's a living kidney donor. Uh, he's also a pastor, and he's a great guy. He's from Rochester, New York, as well. His name is Nick Gentile, a super guy. Uh, I'd really... I'd really encourage you to try to hook up with him. He's uh, he's somebody who persevered to become a living kidney donor. I mean, this guy, all right, had so many obstacles in front of him to become a living kidney donor, and he just kept going after one mountain after another. He kept on climbing, and it's a really really good guy who just really yeah. you know wanted to to be so. I mean, it's just he's selfless that way, and and it's. Anyway, I think he would be a great connection as well, Neil. I really do. Yeah, thank you. I'll have to. I'll have to talk to Nick then. Yeah, because I already. I already know the uh, the amount of things that I have to get in place for me to be on the list to be a recipient, and seeing what people have to go through to try to become a donor. It's. It is amazing, just to, for somebody to go to all the appointments and uh -huh. be, be on the phone for as long as they have to change their health habits, you know, do it, 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 you know, like I said before, it is the biggest, one of the biggest selfless gifts you could ever have. And just for the simple fact of somebody taking the time to call and then go through with that, it means the world to me. Cause like I said, I know I can't give a kidney. I, I can't give much nowadays you know as far as my uh, organs go but for somebody to go through all of that it just means you know not even to me to other people in the community i know how much it means to them you know right uh-huh and yeah. so it was uh it's it, it says a lot what for somebody to put their needs and their wants aside for a good amount of time to try to become a donor you know and even if they aren't Absolutely. successful even if they aren't successful you know it's still all the sacrifice that goes into it nobody can make them do that and they take it upon themselves so it's you know we're i'm thankful for anybody who has called for me already and gone through with everything that they've gone through and i it means the world to me that people are even here watching my story with you right now you know it it seriously does it's just something that i never expected and that just the feedback and the support that i've gotten along the way is something that i never imagined either so it's it's just i'm just very grateful for the support and like i said the community and people like you and yeah. people like people like nick and i could tell from the comments that he's a well-liked person so he is, and, yeah. and that's and that you know, that's it takes a person like that to be humble and that selfless to want to make that decision. You know, right. so mm -hmm. we're just thankful. You know, Jonathan Trailer is asking what blood type you are. So we've got the information down at the bottom. Um, you know, I believe that your blood type, your blood type O, is that right? I'm A. A, that's right. Your blood type yep. A. So with blood type A, the donor can be either O or A. So. Um, so with blood type A, again, the donor type blood type can be O or A. And so, you know, I, I, I uh, invite anybody to take the Living Donor Challenge and apply at Strong Memorial Hospital in Rochester, New York. Uh, the phone number is down here at the bottom, 585-275-5875. Uh, blood type O or A. But I also imagine if you're not the right blood type, Neil, uh, your transplant hospital probably still accepts the, the shared exchange, the Yes. exchange program right yes definitely yep and um 
I just want to add to your challenge too for everybody who isn't in Rochester and uh, if you have a license and you can sign the back of it to become an organ donor, we want to add on to that too. You know, yeah, yes, I, I do need a kidney, but there's thousands of other people that can benefit from any part of mm -hmm, a gift, right. you know, so that, you know, yes, I do need a kidney and I'm very thankful for all the, you know, putting towards that, but we want to extend it to more, you know, everybody, if, if you can, sign your license and say that you'll be an organ donor, do it because it takes a lot for next of kin to decide that. And we don't want to put, and you know, nobody wants to be in that position either. So if you know in your heart that you want to be an organ donor, you can, you know, take the couple seconds and get yourself in line to do that too, you know? So, but yeah, right. I, uh, that's strong. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that, man. Yes. Um, absolutely. Uh, what I'm liking right now, what I'm, what I'm, the vibe that I'm getting from you, bro, is that you, you sound and you seem to me like a, a guy that has a huge heart. All right, and you come across as somebody who, who thinks of other people, and I'm digging that. And and I'm, if I'm feeling that and I'm getting that vibe, I'm hoping other people are are picking up on that as well. Um, please, if you're picking up on that, don't be stingy. Okay, please share this message. Uh, because this guy is a good guy. Probably wears, probably wears a big white hat. All right, you can count on him. You rely on him. Okay, like just like a calculator, you can count on this guy. So please, make sure that you share this message so we can help this guy. Uh, but let me know, okay? Um, be, um, when you, when you're down and out, okay, and you've had a bad day. Help me understand how your family has picked you up on those days. Uh, you know, it, on bad days are that's when, you know, I'll leave dialysis, and if she, I guarantee she'll leave a comment if I tell her by nine forty-five, my mom is getting a phone call from me, whether she's at work or at home and I'm asking her what she's doing, you know, and it's my form of the way of just say, you know, just talk to me, just, you know, get my mind off of it because I am beat. I'm exhausted. You know, I, if I got to go to work or if I even, even if I have the day off, I'm, you know, I'm tired and, it's that she knows that that's my cry for help. Not to say that I don't reach out to my father or my girlfriend, you know, but my mom is always the first one. Um, just because I think it's, she's mom, you know, so it's just like that. But, um, and then on my, you know, in a more physical aspect of things, I, I live with my father and my stepmom and my girlfriend and, um, you know, if it's helping me with the dog or, you know, feeding the dog or something like that because I'm too tired to climb out of bed and go downstairs or if it's, you know, my girlfriend making dinner for us and we try to walk nightly, you know, and if I oh, right if on. on a dialysis day sometimes, uh -huh. you know, more often than not, I'll say, can we wait till, you know, after dinner or, you know, maybe we don't go for a walk tonight and, you know, and that's uh, the biggest thing is that the, your support system has to be understanding. Mm -hmm. And my, my biggest thing is that I had to be understanding that I can't do everything. I'm not Superman, you know, I'm 27. Yes. I, sh I can still do a lot of things, but I, I I have a pretty serious illness right now, and if there's things that I can't do, I'm gonna try my best to do what I can do. But when I can't fight, Stuart Scott, I'm a big sports guy. And Stuart All right, Scott on. said it. Yeah. When you get tired of fighting, keep fighting, and when you can't fight anymore, let other people fight for you. And you know, I I've, I've been uh, letting that happen more recently and um it's been very helpful to have other people you know bear some of the burden of things that i don't necessarily have you know that 
the day will go on if that certain thing doesn't get done, you know, then I'm okay with letting somebody else help me through those situations. So um, a lot of it is just uh, people there to talk to me, you know, and I have sympathy left and right, but the ones closest to me know that I need every now and then a swift kick and that's, you know, tough love and, um, that's what gets me through it too, is saying, you know, you, you, you you've gotten this far. I'm not, we're not going to let one dialysis treatment rock you like this and knock you off your horse. We're going to, you know, you're going to take a nap and then when you get up, we're going to handle what we have to handle. So it, you know, I, uh, I would have to say the biggest thing for my bad days are, one, talking to people, and two, the people that I talk to and lean on are understanding. Nice. Know, and that, yeah. and that's, that's the biggest thing is just to have a good support system surround me. And, you know, it continues to grow, like I said, um, with you guys and reaching out and just, you know, uh, people wanting to – they see these the shirts and I'm out posted the shirts and there's people – asking if they can get one or if they can, you know, who to call and all that stuff. People that I don't, don't even know. Exactly. So yeah. it's, it's, it's God works in mysterious ways and, you know, so I'm just, I'm thankful for the support system I have because they've, you know, made everything known and also just surround me with love, you know, so Absolutely, that's, yeah. and that's the biggest thing. It is. You know, we've had some uh, people asking or kind of uh, encouraging you if you don't have one already is to create a Facebook page. So, you know, the um, do you uh, I know you're on in Instagram uh, and you're on Facebook, but do you have your own Facebook page where it's like a business page where uh, not to advocate for a kidney? I do not. OK. But, I mean, if be, if that's a recommendation that our people in the community think will work, I definitely, yeah. you know, like I said, it's going on three years, and we just got the shirts made a couple right. weeks ago. So you know, we're oh, still that's... trying, still trying new things, still trying, you know, to get yeah. my name out there. Everybody's, you know, the awareness out there, oh, yeah. everything like that. So I'm cool. not, you know, I'm not uh, the only thing I don't want to try, and don't anybody get mad at me for this, but the bumper stickers because all right, all right, <laughs> my uh, my driving is nothing to write home about. So. <laughs> All right, I, don't want, all right. I don't want anybody getting upset seeing my name on my car and you know, okay. the, op the opposite oh, happens. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. No. All right. So the, the advantage, one advantage about building a Facebook page just for your search for a living kidney donor is that the, if you have a, a, a poster, whether you do a video or um, you know, like if you had your uh, a Facebook page and you, shared this video um, or just any video in general, you make a short, you know, three minute video, just kind of telling you, telling your followers about your week. Then the, the advantage is, is that you can actually pay Facebook money uh, to boost it and then you can get it shown. And, and it's kind of like advertising more popular. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and it, it gets shown to more people because you pay Facebook to do that. So it's one big advantage right there. Uh, and the other the other thing is that, you know, people can always go back and easily find um, find you and find posts and different things that they liked about your page. Um, things that sometimes aren't as easily found on your own feed, like, um, you know, your, your donor blood type, or your transplant hospital information and stuff like that. Right. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I should do that then. Yeah, cool. So um, now. She, Neil, uh, Lisa Baxter's watching. Uh, she's a transplant recipient herself. She's the host of Lisa Baxter show on Sunday night. She's saying your family now make a video. Uh, we've got, uh, of course, uh, your, your own best advocate. We've got people chiming Definitely in. True. Um, Definitely true. Yes, we do. And, you know, and Jonathan um, is great at getting the word out. He, I'm sure he'll be happy to help share anything that you put out. Um, we'll do that as well. Donna Tassat is a great person to, to share. We've got a great number of people here watching that will come together and help you, give you support in the kidney disease community. But 
you know, what I really like as well is the way you've talked about your family and your support system because you hit it right, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, a good support system will really get you far along, especially when, okay, and, and, and we don't wish them, but there, there are going to be some stumbles, you know, there are going right. to be some, some hills and then there will be valleys. But on those days where you have a hill and you've got to climb that hill, it's good to have somebody, you know, grab your hand, you know, right. and pull you along and help you. And that's what family does. And I love that you've got your family, your support, your uh, of course, uh, your your girlfriend's a great support system, and we've got uh, so many people putting in comments. I I want to encourage everybody to keep on commenting. All right, Facebook will show this and make this video, this broadcast more visible, and it gives Neil support too. So please keep on commenting, and don't be stingy. Please share. Um, and she's also a very good resource for um, a lot of different things. Lisa Baxter is uh, she. If you have, um, you know, any sort of questions about resources within your state. Um, awesome. Yeah. She's in New York as well, just not Rochester. Um, okay. Yeah. So Jonathan Trailer says, Neil sounds like a great guy. Let's help him get a kidney. Thank you. Yes, Thank he you. does sound like a great guy. And we like and love helping good guys. So let's do this. Uh, the IPRO Renal Network, Kidney Fund, Polycystic Kidney Disease Foundation, National Kidney Foundation. And, She's giving some more resources here. So thank you, Lisa. Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah. So, man, uh, the shirts, um, love the shirts. You know, what happens is um, with shirts, your family will get excited when you've got shirts. They'll wear them. And, and then also just builds enthusiasm. I like anything that builds enthusiasm. Definitely. Um, and and when, when you're doing the shirts, it does build enthusiasm and and when you've got somebody going into now, I, I understand it's still a pandemic, but you can still go into a, a Walmart and it's still fairly busy, or at least uh, in my state. And even with the pandemic, we've got you can't necessarily see the smiles with the masks on, but um, right. it's still fairly busy. OK, and when you go into a Walmart. All right. And you're somebody's rocking your T-shirt. OK, then, you know, it, it's free advertisement. And again, exactly. you never know. All right. So I have, I have somebody that I used to advocate for and he was rocking a t-shirt in Walmart and somebody saw his t-shirt, you know, called the phone number and became a living kidney donor for him. Yeah. I see. And incredible things like that happen. And, you know, I, I can't say that the t-shirt was my idea. I think <laughs> my mom and my brother said that, you know, and, um, we went with it, but it, and that's what I've thought of ever since, you know, is, uh, just that the, any publicity is, is getting, getting my name out there and, you know, more, the more calls, the merrier. And it, and it's just, you know, a free way for me to say, Hey, look there, you know, there's a bunch of people going through this, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not the only, I'm not the only one either. And right. that's why, that's why, you know, the front is just, just for kidney awareness, you know, literally. And then, um, like I, w so now this is my dialysis shirt. I decided that, you know, as, as often as I can, um, I'm going to wear one of these two dialysis. So everybody else knows, you know, that this is what's going on. And, you know, and unfortunately I have a uniform at my store, but All right, um, yeah. or else I'd be wearing this too, but, there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. you know, but um right now well the the gyms just opened in new york state uh not too long ago but my doctor advised me to still stay away for a little while but mm -hmm. um i was working out like six days a week so that was originally the reason why we had them made so i could wear it at the gym and try to catch people's attention there too you know so that's why right. i kind of okay. kind of went with the bright color and you know uh -huh. just ba basic information and um Cause that's, that's the other thing, you know, is that by looking at a kidney failure patient, you can't always tell that they are sick, you know? So, you know, and not to, not to try to give myself credit or anything for going to the gym or whatnot, but it's conversation when I'm there, like, Oh, who's Neil, you know, who, what's, what's the shirt about? You know, yeah. that's me. And that's, 
it's happened before where people see my fistula and they ask me if everything's okay. And that starts a conversation. And then, you know, that's just, it's not working. It's just another piece in that. So I figured if I uh, can have them notice a shirt rather than my arm, it's probably good for my personal being too. So, you know, but absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. we tried to just, uh, and, and that's the other thing is that it can be a conversation or it doesn't even have to be a conversation. Yeah. You know? So people can okay. just take the inf- just take the information down and they don't even and I might not even, you know, know that they did. So yeah. It's just another way to get it out there. For sure, man. I love it. Yeah. So we've we've got some people um talking about Jen Benson and I want to bring that up because Jen Benson is a uh, a she's a uh, a kidney transplant recipient and she also uh, is a advocate and she, she actually has, I had her on as a co-host, uh, just recently and she has a, uh, website. I'm going to bring that up. Um, so that you can see it. It's Steve just shared it. So I'm going to find it again. All right, here it is. So, you know, uh, her, again, her name's Jen Benson. And then we, she has a website. It's called transplantjourney.org. So it's pretty simple transplantjourney.org and jen benson um is a a advocate now um she's uh got a great thing going with uh trying to help people um so you can always go to the comments as well and you can find this after the broadcast neil but it's really right. simple transplantjourney.org and I just the, took a picture of it with nice cell phone. i love it okay <laughs> yeah so you know she's the ceo um, as she, as Donna just reminded me, you know, she's the CEO of transplant journey and she's, she's multifaceted where she's a transplant recipient and right. an advocate. She's doing both. Um, okay. and she's a great, great, um, great wealth of, of information. There's also one, uh, that my, my good friend, uh, Jonathan trailers reminding me about is Kent, Kent, uh, Oh my gosh. I mean, his last name's escaping me. Please remind me his last name. Bressler. Help, help me under, um, remind me of his last name. I hope I got that right. Kent Bressler uh, owns kidney solutions, kidney solutions.org. Um, Kent Bressler is also a kidney transplant recipient. This is another good website to go to as well for help in finding a living kidney donor. So, awesome. you know, Jen Benson is awesome. Um, so is Kent Br- Bressler. Um, so uh, I've got right here. I want to. Oh, here we go. Yeah, th- there we go. You're right. I did get it right. Good. All right, Kent Bressler. Yeah. So I did get it. So um, I wanted to bring another comment up here, Neil. So it says your family, mom, dad, step parents, and brother are always there for you daily, Mammy and me. That's awesome. How does yeah. it make you feel to 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 read something like that and to see all of the great support that your family is is giving you uh well at this point in time it's like yep i know everybody's got my back no but um (laughs) it just you know they've been there for 27 years and uh, never dropped the ball so um it just it makes me feel that i i'm not alone in this yes i am the one going and sitting in the chair but if any of them could take it away from me i know they would and i know that if i needed any of them at 5 a.m when i go in the chair 4 30 for a ride there or i know that there would be a line to try to help me wow wow and it's just and that's the that's the best part you know because it's uh, this it this disease it's just incredibly different than anything I've experienced, you know, because you don't think that it will affect affect you psychologically. And then, you know, I, it does more than, you know, more than you believe. So having those, those people to be able to, to lean on and talk to and just, you know, get through the good and the bad with, it's just, mm-hmm. it's a bless It's a blessing it that I don't have to, you know, har- harbor all of that inside and deal with all of it on my own, you know, because that's it. my, my girlfriend is, uh, she's 
six years younger than me. So for her being, you know, she's going to turn 22 soon. It's that's a lot for a 22 year old to, to make the conscious decision that I'm going to, you know, do what I have to do to, yeah, make this make this work. I guess I got her fooled somehow, but uh, you know, hey, yeah. I, <laughs> you, you, you found a you found a gem. You did. I, I mean, did. So, that and that's the a thing. lot about her character and about how much she cares about you. It really does. Yeah, it does. And I'm extremely blessed to have her, you know, put up with the bad mood swings, and then I'm incredibly, you know, joyful that we get to spend the good times together. So. I uh, I lucked out with Victoria, so I'm you know I'm very thankful for her, and you know that not to say she's the only one to make it easy on me. Like my aunt Diane said, her my both my grandmas, my dad, my stepmom. Mm -hmm. I have big families on both sides. I have a bunch of step siblings, and I know that at any moment I could call any one of the eight and they pick up and you know if wow. i needed to talk if uh -huh. i needed to talk to them they talk to me you know and it, it's it's a step that has helped like i said with a lot of relationships as drastic as that may sound it, when you're pushed to the limits is when you you know you show your true character and they've all shown me how much they mean to me and how much i mean to them so right I'm, you know, I just consider myself blessed. Uh, that is a blessing. That is absolutely, mm -hmm. man. It, uh, we're we've got a, a ton of people commenting here, and you've got a great. Uh, it, you're, a lot of people are showing you re a lot of support, and I appreciate that. Uh, please keep the comments coming because again, that does help not only Neil, but it helps this broadcast get visible by Facebook. And then I want to I want to um, say thank you for watching, Jenny Moore. Um, Thanks for watching. She's saying she's stopping by to show love and support. And thank you all for all you do. Once again, my husband says to tell you hello. I've had her husband on as a inter I've interviewed him on the Warriors Quest show. Um, thanks again for your sharing our story. God bless you. And God bless you, Neil. God bless yes. you and your family, yeah. Jenny. God bless you, Jenny. Thanks for the comment. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope your husband's doing well. Um, you know, support is so important. Donna's saying, and it is. And, you know, we've got um, a, a lot of people, um, a lot of people that are commenting, you know, and they're 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 saying some similar things. Support family is key. Um, we've got, you know, Steve saying you lucky boy, you know, talking about Victoria. I guess. But, <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, and we've got some new people that are watching tonight. Um, I hope I pronounce this right. Aline or Elin. Um, Elin Dombro, um, she's a, a thank you for watching. I've actually interviewed her. I'm, I've scheduled an interview for her, and she'll be on the Warriors Quest show soon. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and, and don't be stingy. <laughs> <laughs> don't be stingy, people. Don't be stingy and share. Yes, we need some more shares. Um, you know, the, the thing about shares, and Neil, you get this, is that Things can really catch fire, okay, on a broadcast. One is the comments because that means that um, with the more comments, the more engagement it is. And the more engagement, Facebook says, man, there are a lot of people commenting here. There's engagement here. They're a lot of people like to yeah, see this. Right. right. So they're going to show this. And the other thing that happens is that when there's a lot of comments, there's more engagement. Then we start sharing it. Then we start to, then we start to kind of um, – fan the flame all right we fan the flame people okay and that's yeah. what we want to do today is comment all right show some support not only show some support that you're you're commenting but let's talk about maybe how this has affected you guys as well uh, comment about how maybe your support system has helped you through this uh, and help Neil know that you've got his back as well uh, and so then when we start to fan the flame and we start sharing then all of a sudden it gets it gets shown to somebody's friend that didn't know that that you are in search of a kidney donor. Somebody's friend right. that maybe they haven't seen in six, seven, or ten years, maybe not since high school, and they get stirred, maybe they get inspired, and then boom. I mean, things can happen. We all know this uh, because we have the power of share and it's a powerful thing if we come together and we fan the flame 
and we don't be stingy. All right, so let's, <laughs> let's do this, everybody. All right, um, we've got Victoria chiming in, such an awesome live. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, because this makes this success a success story for Neil, and that's the idea. That's the premise of the Warriors Quest show is to get this out there, to get his story told and get his voice heard. So please help this get out there. Um, share it on Twitter, share it on Snapchat, share it on TikTok, uh, share it on, you know, um, I don't know, um, put it on your uh, bulletin board in your in break room at work. I don't know. <laughs> wherever you, wherever yeah. things can be shared, share it. That's right. Okay. And uh, so uh, we're, we're uh, coming to an end here, but what I sometimes do, Neil, is I keep it going if there's a lot of comments and people are, and it's flowing. And so if you're okay, let's keep this going for a little while longer. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about um, the, the idea of, of sharing this and what others can do to find you. So, um, you're on Instagram and the, um, Victoria shared your email address. How can other people get connected with you if they want, other than of course, finding your, your transplant hospital information, we've got scrolling across the screen here, but how can they connect with you if they have questions or if they'd like to, to give you support? Yeah. Um, I, the, really the two social medias I use are the, this Facebook account, Neil Patrick. And then, uh, my Instagram is, uh, Neil underscore E L as an elder is just my last name, but it's N E I L underscore E L. Um, you know, and like Jared said, any, any feedback, any, uh, encouragement, anything that I can use, you know, I appreciate it. And, um, like I said, just for, you know, I, for me, it's bigger than just me, but I understand right now it is my, you know, my moment. We're talking about me needing a kidney, but, you know, I think the biggest thing is for me to advocate for the, the other thousands of people who are also in need, because if I'm not, um, a match, you know, you can help somebody else out and, coming from me i'm you know i'm saying that it's going to help somebody's life whether you know them or not and it's a selfless act and you know it, it, i've had people try and they're not matches for me and i encourage them to keep going because you could be somebody else's saving grace you know and right now i don't know of anybody going through the uh the process to be a living donor for me. So I'm waiting for a phone call from uh, Strong saying that I have a uh, deceased donor, which, you know, is as mo as morbid as it is, it's a blessing in a different way. But I just think if we get advocate and get it out there that there are thousands of other people who need a kidney besides for Neil Eldridge, you know, then that's the way that, we'd like to keep going, you know, cause, uh, a lot, just a lot of people are affected by this that most people don't know about, you know, and it's, it's just, you can, you can save someone's life and you can change someone's life at that too. And, you know, and it's just, it's just about trying to help the next, the next person and humanity really is what it is. And, I'm thankful that everybody is uh, tuning in, staying tuned in and commenting. So, um, you know, thank you guys. It means a lot to me. It means a lot that we're going to get this video out there and hopefully I can find a match for a kidney. And, you know, um, that's the other thing I didn't tell you about Jared is that I uh -huh. am strong does um, pancreas transplants as well. So I'm in line for one of those. All right, so, right on. Okay. So after all my surgeries are done, you it won't be Neil anymore. It'll just be the Bionic Man, and that's, that's I'm right. <laughs> legally going to change my name to that. You know, all so, right, okay, uh, all right. But well, that's another bridge to to cross <laughs> yeah. when we get there. But right, right, yeah. So um, you know, just really just trying to get the uh, the idea of organ donations out there to everybody, and just 
to let everybody know that, you know, it could, it, it could be someone, you know, it could be someone you don't know. It could be you, you know, someone you love and it could be tomorrow and, or it could be five years from now, but you know, it's something that you don't necessarily ever expect to affect you, you know? So it's just thankful for all the people that have shown support along the way. Absolutely. Uh, man, this is powerful. This is powerful. Um, I've got, I, I, my bad. I, I put no, it's okay. Yeah, I pushed the wrong button. So I wouldn't. It's like I was upstaging you. Um, Don't so take we, the pressure off me. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we've got um, Jonathan Trailer saying strong testimony, and you can give other people, you know, that you can give to other people. And, you know, and, and he makes a good point. And what sometimes is overlooked is that your story, okay can be very inspiring. You've got a great testimony about just or um, donor, you know, living donor, do, you know, donation in general. So, and, and then you just, you're promoting that people become a donor in, in general as well. So that right. if they, God forbid they die, but if they do, you're also saying, please become a donor. And, right. and I love that because, you know, we do need more donors, whether, you know, uh, I wish that everybody could live till they're, um, you know, um, elderly and they've got a full life. But if they don't and there's an accident that happens, if they are a donor, they can save many lives. And so I, I love that, brother. Um, let's make people more aware that we can save more lives by becoming donors. So this is great. Um, I love your enthusiasm, your positivity. But the, anyway, the point I was trying to make, I'm getting off a little bit, is that your story can be inspiring. And you never know. You never know who may be watching that needs your inspiration. Like uh, Ellen or Eileen, okay? Um, I'm going to be interviewing her in, in the next little while, the next upcoming weeks. She could be, you know, inspired by your story now today. Um, right. There are other people that could be watching this like six months from now on replay that could get inspired. I mean, there, there is many things that can happen by your inspiration, but by inspiration, I want people to understand that you, you do think of other people. All right. And I want, and I know that sometimes hard to, to give yourself props. I'll, I'll give you the props. Okay. And I'll let you um, stand, um, aside a little bit while I do that because uh, you know I have a hard time sometimes getting props but I'll give it to you okay all right anybody who watches this can understand that you're you're a good guy that thinks of other people all right Thank you've you. got a, you've got a, you seem like a guy who has a big heart and so I'm I'm really asking everybody who has felt all right the same sort of inspiration the the same if you're stirred by his story like I am don't be stingy please share this because all right we can be strong as a community all right we can come together and we can share this and make this powerful everybody has on an average 314 facebook friends statistically speaking more some people have more some people less but that's an average Okay, and if you're above average, then please share because we have a greater chance <laughs> to have it shown if you're above average Facebook users. So please do that. And we can make sure that we get this out there to as many people as possible. The cool thing is to get it shown to people that have not ever seen his story before. Someone who maybe isn't in his network of friends that has no idea. Somebody that maybe hasn't <laughs> that maybe you've not been connected with in many years like i've talked about this can't right. happen all right we can set this on fire light it like a firecracker it's not the fourth of july but you've got my permission to light this up people <laughs> so we've man we've got uh we've got many people supporting you which is awesome we are in this fight with you neil so continue to show support please comment and, and let them know about your support. Give him words of encouragement and, and please share this so that we can get this in front of people that can be or be inspired to become a living kidney donor. So speaking of which, I wanna talk about that for a moment. So um, yes, please share this everyone. 
Um, a living kidney donor, okay, many, for those of you that have thought about becoming a living kidney donor, all right, many people live on very normal lives after they've donated their kidney. Many people have shared their testimonies that they feel physically the same that they did before they donated, before they had surgery. Many people still jogs. Many people are still on their bicycles. Many people are still going to the gym. All right. In many cases, the kidney, all right, is going to function and um, at a, it's going to actually make up for some of the function that the other kidney did. And you're going to have that compensate and your one kidney is going to be just fine. Statistically speaking, you don't necessarily need. All right, everybody. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened to my to my connection. I don't know if uh, I'm not sure if perhaps uh, I had a little power outage or something happened. But I'm back. I thought I told you that we won't stop. All right, so we're gonna end the show, Neil. Um, and I want to thank uh, thank you for coming on. All right, I want to thank Thanks everybody for having such great support. Uh, and I'm very thankful that we could get your story out. Let's continue to do this. Man, we've got some great comments I want to show really fast, though. Love to you, young man. Keep fighting. Thank you, Jared, for sharing Joe and Jenny's story. Uh, this is my, this is That is my daughter and son-in-law. We're praying for a donor for him as well. Joseph Moore is a fighter as well. Yes, God bless Keep Joseph fighting, Moore. buddy. Yes, God bless Joseph Moore. All right, so um, again, I'm going to give you uh, time to kind of give – um, give your shout outs. Who would you like to shout out? And uh, who would you like to, uh, to say thank you to? Um, I want to let you just go sh solo for a moment before we end it. Uh, well, first off, I just want to thank you for having me on the show and get my story out. Um, you know, I want to thank my girlfriend for setting it up and uh, my mom for countless times asking me to come over to her house to do it um even though i have to get up for dialysis at 4 a.m um hope she understands why i did it um want to thank my uh dad who's downstairs and i can hear my uh, words about five seconds after i say them every time so thank you for that um, <laughs> um but no thank you to everyone who is uh who watched who turned who tuned in people that didn't know me uh, thank you for your kind words and your support and uh, for, you know, all the all the support and the guidance and, uh, you know, holding the flashlight for me to see the way that I'm supposed to go. Um, uh, thank you to my grandma, too, um, Aunt Diane. Um, I want to thank my uh, my girlfriend's family, too, for. Uh, you know, accepting me and just rolling with the punches for everything that I have to go through and being understanding and um, my siblings too, for just knowing that sometimes Neil is 
the, what comes first, you know, and it's not because I want to, but it's because I have to. So, um, Maria, it's good to hear from you. I, it's probably been close to 20 years, uh, in that account, but thank you for watching. Um, and really just, you know, any of my coworkers who watch tonight, um, and friends, everybody, I know that I had a bunch of family members out of town, uh, share it. I don't know if they watch too, but thank you. And, um, you know, I, I am loved. That's my stepmom. I am loved. And I just want everybody to know that I appreciate everything that they do and that I love them too. And that's the, uh, the biggest message is that, you know, I'm, I'm just thankful for all the support and all the, uh, the guidance and, you know, everything that you've done, Jared, and everything that goes into this. And, you know, it's an established uh, network that I'm getting my feet into. So thank everybody involved. And uh, I really appreciate all you guys. Awesome, man. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and uh, thank you again. Uh, God bless you and your family, Neil. Thank because you. I, I wish you nothing but happiness. I hope that God continues to protect you, to watch over you, and I know that he's acutely aware of your trials, your tribulations, and, and I know that he's going to continue to bless you. Um, you. You have a great aura. You've got so much positivity, and, and any bad day you have, I know your family will lift you up. All right, so please, all right, there is a light, okay, and Jesus is that light, and he will continue to to help you and to love you and give you as much protection as possible. God bless Definitely. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good evening, bro. All right, you too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, so we, we've heard from a great kidney warrior all right, Neil is going through something. He's got the boxing gloves on, everyone. All right, um, he is battling every day. Uh, he's got a great support system, but you know what? We can intensify his support system by coming together as a kidney disease community and sharing, sharing this broadcast. All right, we can come together and give, give more to his cause all right, we can make sure that people understand that that we have empathy for what he's going through and that we can do more for him. All right, so one of the things I wanted to talk about is we've got Jen Benson, who's going to be on um, the Urban Health Outreach Media Saturday night. All right, so she's going to be on with Steve Belcher. So please tune in Saturday night and listen and tune in, watch and you'll get to hear from Jen Benson, as along with my, my homeboy, Steve Belcher. So please tune into that. And tomorrow night, we've got, of course, uh, Urban Renal Talk with Tamika and Steve. So watch that. Thank you, everyone, for watching. God bless you all. All right, um, man, I think you're welcome, Kathleen. All right, um, the light, if he's the light in your life, I get it because I, I, I have just a great feeling about Neil and I want everyone who else who also has gotten a good feeling from this guy who has gotten a, has re, been receptive to how he's thinking of others who wants to promote awareness and education all right please come on share this so that we can keep this lit all right fan the flame fan the flame everyone let's get this going share this and let's get let's get over a hundred shares all right, let's make sure that we keep commenting, get everybody out there to hear this message. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for watching tonight and hearing Neil's story. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to end it tonight, but I'm not going to end this story because we're going to keep it going. Please start watch parties, start one maybe uh, as soon as this is over or start one tomorrow uh, and please continue to have him in your prayers and make sure that you act on any inspiration after you've prayed about this. Thank you very much. Have a good evening again. God bless. I, I, I'm very thankful for all of my followers and I hope that you have a good evening. Boom.